Hey everybody, if you can see these signs going on, we are finally leaving Toronto after two action-packed days of uh, Smash Wrestling at the Franklin Horner Community Center. Um, anyways, yeah, so we are leaving Toronto as the Raptors are playing game two right now. Anyways, this is the official kind of aftermath show of uh, both Smash shows, specifically tonight and kind of what took place. Uh, for the Scumbags of Wrestling, uh, June 2nd, 2019. I'm going to flip it over so we're both on camp. There's me. There's Sean over here driving. Uh, yep. Uh, Winners give bucks. Yeah, so with the endorsement shirt. And I've got uh, the Elite, the Young Bucks. I had a Tarek shirt, uh, but I uh, was hoping to get it uh, signed, but he was uh, busy in the back. So, yeah, so was, uh, wait till July. But, anyways, um, you want to get started on uh, just thoughts overall? Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely a different feel uh, with it being in two days instead of all jam-packed into one. So we had uh, 16 matches spread out over two nights. Uh, the first night, really stellar uh, first round matches and uh, didn't slow down one bit with a uh, sleep in between with them uh, doing match or night number two. Yep, and puddle. <laughs> so we we are driving down the soon to be 401. So 427. If, yeah, 427 right now. So if if we um, video seems choppy or anything like that, that's why because we're on the highway right now. But anyways, um, guess I'll kind of start where I kind of remember. So anyways, and, and this is pre-show stuff. So uh, we get there and uh, uh, you know uh, we go in and some of the talent signing already and this and that and. Uh, sure enough, they, they changed a little bit of plans. So, the it was supposed to have a fan kind of fans versus wrestlers trivia thing taking place. And uh, when I got to the the building, Sean had said that it didn't take place or something like that. And um, anyways, I was like, okay, so just kind of doing our thing and uh, you know mingling with the talent and some of the staff and everything else. And then uh, ring announcer there, um, and I always forget Dustin. <laughs> yeah, Dustin, there we go. Uh, had come up to both of us and asked us if we wanted to be part as far as the fans went. And I was like, hell yeah. So it was myself, Sean, um, Steve Chumbo, uh, Chumbo. Yeah, uh, and two, two other dudes. Things. And I'm sure there'll be videos sometime soon because uh, Kingdom James was recording this as the whole time taking place. Uh, so a team of five of us as fans taking on, it was Kingdom James, um, Carter. Yeah. Yeah, John, uh, John Green, Carter Mason, and the Smash Wrestling Tag Team Champions, uh, Hello Beefcake, so Idris Abraham, as well as uh, Big Joe Coleman. Uh, so, series of it, the questions weren't too hard. I, I, the first question I asked was whether or not it was going to be Smash based, and Dustin said no. And then he pulls out like this 2013 ish uh, WWE trivia card set, and there was three categories. So one was uh, uh, the Attitude Era, one was Classic, and one was I think was Current. Yeah, modern day. Uh, so the only question we got wrong was, uh, well, well, I'll say this first, fuck Kevin Nash. Uh, we ended up losing to the team of the uh, Smash wrestlers, but um, it, it was fun. It was uh, cool to be in the ring and stuff like that, doing the- Chirping uh, back and forth. Yeah, and, and when we say chirping, it wasn't us fans doing the chirping, it was the wrestlers doing the chirping this time around, so. Well, we were chirping them too. Yeah, well, that was, that was kind of quiet. Um, but uh, anyways, it, it was fun. Uh, follow with that, we saw the muscle read everybody poops. Uh, so, which almost got stopped because he wanted to uh, read a Playboy from March of 1985, and apparently on page 38, the uh, girl on the uh, page, her last name is Hunter, and Scott was in the middle of the ring at the same time as. Uh, muscle wanting to read Playboy and as soon as he found out the name of the girl on page 38 Scott quickly grabbed the magazine and ran as apparently this girl is of relation to Scott Hunter whether it's his mother or not we don't know but uh, yeah Scott quickly took the magazine and ran and they played Muscle's music to get him out of the ring, but Muscle decided he was going to read the rest of Everybody Poops. Yeah, so Muscle finished the story, uh, much to the uh, fans' delight, and uh, that was the uh, that was the pre-show right there. So spoiler alert: to end the uh, story, Everybody Poops. 
yeah so um uh maybe the highlight of my weekend <laughs> Uh, but probably not. Uh, maybe top ten. We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll leave that at that. Uh, anyways, um, so we get into the event itself, and I'm gonna try to remember the matches the best I can. Um, match number one, I think, was Kincaid, or was it Dukes? No, it was Kincaid. It was Kincaid. So it was Jason Kincaid against Stu Grayson. Uh, Sean, thoughts on that match? Yeah. Well, from the video that we did uh, before the show started. All my predictions for the uh, final four totally were out the window as we didn't know what matches were going to happen. And I predicted both these guys making the final four. That didn't happen. They uh, battled really uh, well against each other. Just their hard hitting and speed combination that they have together. And uh, Kincaid pulled out the uh, surprise victory over Grayson who didn't get his shoulder up in time. Yeah, so... <laughs> Well played match. I mean, very similar styles between the two guys. Um, you know, definitely, uh, definitely different from uh, tonight's match versus last night's match, where uh, the guy and you know, forgive me for forgetting his name, but that big giant of a guy yesterday. Um, you know, Grayson getting him up over Briggs. his shoulders and stuff. Yeah, Briggs, Josh Briggs. Uh, that was you know that contrast of, of styles and, and obviously size. But uh, tonight was more evenly matched. I mean, Kincaid's phenomenal. Um, as far as his wrestling, uh, you know, his abilities go. Same thing with Stu Grayson, obviously. But, um, yeah, anyways, good match. Uh, surprise ending. Uh, and uh, you know, you'll see some of the pictures online that will you know, show basically Grayson selling the, the loss. But uh, uh, definitely great to see Smash investing in, um, you know, some, some new characters, wrestlers, so to speak. So uh, match number two of the night, I believe, was Tyson, wasn't it? Tyson Dukes against Sebastian Suave. Yeah, so Sebastian played up, you know, he was sportsman-like kind of in the beginning and then kind of played up the fact that he went back to his old kind of ways and, you know, kind of really mouthy during the match and, you know, the character everybody loves as far as the endorsement goes. So At the same time, the Pillars do love beating the crap out of each other, whether they're uh, tag team partners and on the same uh, page or if they're against each other, they uh, definitely shine either way. Yeah, speaking of shiny, holy, my face looks like it's uh, <laughs> almost neon right now. But um, anyways, that yeah, the sun's setting. It's kind of cool, actually, because we're driving and like planes all over the sky like birds right now. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, hard-hitting match. I mean, uh, Tyson, I think, I think submission in this one. Yeah, it was a uh, modified Boston Crab, I believe, where Tyson had uh, Sebastian's... Uh, hands gripped at the same time and then Boston Crab style and uh, you know Sebastian had nothing to you know he, he couldn't do anything at all uh, but submit um, so uh, Tyson moves on but uh, the, the biggest part of this match was the post match I'll let Sean explain here yeah well even before that it was uh, interesting where you were standing at uh, the time during this match that there was a uh, young child uh, or toddler crying at the same time uh, during part of the match and that was actually Sebastian's son uh, probably upset seeing daddy get uh, thrown around like he did with uh, Tyson Dukes uh, anyways after the match Kingdom came out because uh, just last night Kingdom told him that he had to make a decision between uh, Kingdom or the Pillars because he's a totally different guy when he's with the Pillars than when he's with uh, Kingdom and uh, when they came out he came out and tried to help Sebastian up Sebastian ended up hitting him and security got in there to pull the two guys apart Kingdom said no it's okay I'm only here to apologize security let them go they had it out uh, Kingdom said that he felt to blame for Sebastian losing because he wasn't by Sebastian's side and decided to say that he's not going to pressure Sebastian to not be with the Pillars, but he just wants Sebastian to be the same person, whether he's with the Pillars or with uh, Kingdom at all times, not have two different styles. And uh, they finally actually agreed to that and Kingdom built him up really well. And as the shirt says, winners hug. So they hugged it out and then wondered why did they allow these pipsqueak security guys to even touch them and that's when both Sebastian and K 
Kingdom ended up turning on the security and totally ripped them from pillar to post. Huge power bomb uh, from Kingdom James on uh, Fireball Jordan James, and uh, yeah, they just totally destroyed all the security there, and then celebrated together and had a, a huge hug, like the uh, hug that Chris took a photo of in the original Huggers. Hey, winners get hugs uh, slogan. Yeah, so it um, definitely interesting to see whether I mean I don't I don't I don't trust this as as far as the friendship between Kingdom and, and Sebastian goes. I think I don't know I don't know if there's enough time in between now and Super Showdown Seven to build a feud like a match between the two. Unless July sixth through seventh we see Kingdom turn on Sebastian and then all of a sudden Sebastian's like, all right, this is you know I want my match. I think it'd be cool to see Kingdom uh, take on Sebastian. Uh, Sean's theory was at one point that we might get to see Sebastian versus Tarek uh, at Super Showdown 7 again, and it still might happen. But uh, anyways, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be neat to see. Uh, it's kind of cool, I mean, they, they call him, uh, the Kingdom was making fun of these guys, the security guys, but they're actually the Tyson Deuce students, and um, I mean, yeah, that one power bomb that Kingdom gave to, uh, who was it, Jordan James? Yeah, like holy crap, that uh, loud thud. But uh, anyways, um, good to see. Uh, glad to see the hashtag being used, by the way. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, it's, it'd be interesting to see where they go in uh, leading into Super Showdown uh, 7. Uh, next match of the night was uh, match 3 of the tourney, which was Beadball Mike Bailey against Psycho Mike Rollins. Um, again, Mike uh, Rollins' conscience played a, a factor in this match. Comical again. Um, anyways, uh, Sean, thoughts on the match? Uh, really good match. Uh, once again, comedy uh, with the conscience getting involved. And uh, one way or another, a Mike was going to win. In, in this case, it was Speedball Mike Bailey. Yeah, so Mike... I mean, Mike uh, performed his normal tactics. And I want to say Mike, I guess there's two Mikes in the match. But Speedball Bailey, you know, uh, quick and... And uh, you know, just a uh, uh, striker and everything else. And um, anyways, uh, you know, when I say Psycho Mike's conscious played a factor in this match, it was, you know, him kind of telling him, hey, you know, Speedball's gonna do this next, look out, blah, 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 blah. And uh, continuous through the match. But I mean, the Psycho Mike character plays it up so well um, with 